Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video series, we're going to be going through state flow and how to use state flow. I'm basically going to be going through what I've learned over the past couple of weeks in using state flow. It's a bit difficult. There's not really that much um, content out there to learn from. And most of the content goes at, for me anyways, a very fast pace. So I'm going to try and go at a very slow pace in this, in this video series and just really explain what's going on. It's more suited towards people that haven't used MATLAB before haven't used Simulink and haven't used Stateflow. So when you open our MATLAB, you get seen with this screen, you come up to the top up here and you click Simulink. And then you scroll down here and you click Stateflow. And then you're faced with a few options. As you get more advanced, you'll be able to start clicking on simple start, Stateflow chart and more chart, etc. But for now, just go with blank chart, create model. You get this window up here and then just maximize it. And so this is Stateflow. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create a very simple state machine, one in which if you imagine that we had, for example, like an Arduino or something with a camera or a Raspberry Pi with a camera, and we wanted to track an object, for example, like a ball bouncing around. So we would have three states, we'd have an off state, so the, the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino, the software, whatever is off, is off, and then we'll have another state whereby the camera is active and it's looking for the ball. And then you'd have another state, the final state, which is it's found the ball and it's now tracking the ball. Okay, so super, it's good. It's literally a free state machine, a free state state machine, and it should be super easy to do. So, um, and then after this video, what we'll do is we'll then go into a lot more detail about how we actually use the various different things in state flow. So I'm going to make this state machine super quick. I'm going to use all the various different shortcuts and things that I've learned over the past few weeks learning state flow. And then in the coming videos, I'll break it down in a lot more detail how I'm doing these various different shortcuts. So firstly, let's create our first state machine, our first state. Copy that, copy that. So we're going to go off. And then we're going to go um, searching. And you go tracking. So we've got three states now. Cool. And then let's put our transitions between them. Go back and forth. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say to go from off to searching, we're going to have a power button. Let's do power button. And we're going to say that's equal to one. All right. Then we're going to say to go from searching to off again, we're going to say our button's equal to zero. Okay. And then we also want to be able to turn it off from this tracking state. So we're going to go here to here. And we're going to go power button is equal to zero. Cool. All right. So super simple so far. We've got where we come into off in our default state. We press the power button, then it goes into searching. At the moment, it's just going to stay in searching or just go straight to tracking because it's got nothing to do. If the power button is turned off, then you'll go back to off. If you're in tracking and the power button's pressed, meaning turned off, then you'll come all the way back to off again. So right now we need the transition between here. So let's put ball found. All found is equal to one. And then ball found is equal to zero. Cool. So now we, we've got our two variables that we've made ball found and power button. Press up here. So we make the variables. That's it. The variables are done. And that's it. That's our super simple state machine. So state flow exists inside Simulink. So you've come up here. This is our Simulink model. So we've got our two inputs here. State flow is actually clever enough to know that these two variables here are inputs. So if we come over here, what we can do is we can actually use Simulink now to actually simulate our state machine a lot better. So if we go back into our state machine, we click, we click run. So what's going to happen is as we click run, it's the state machine is going to come into hit off state and it's going to realize, OK, the power button variable doesn't have a value. hasn't been pressed, so there's no value of one. 
so I'm not gonna I can't go to searching and then obviously there's no other transition for it to take the 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 simulation will just go into off state and that's it, it won't do anything else right so inside simulink let's create two switches one that simulates the ball being found and the other one that simulates the power button and then that way we'll be able to control our simulation so if we come over to here click li library browser up at the top here the library browser and then from here you can actually search for things for example like switch And so, for example, you have a slider switch and put that here. Let's do another one. We'll do, for example, let's go over toggle switch. OK, so we come over to here to label it. We'll click annotation and then we can clip up here and we can type power button. Now we can copy and paste that and put it the same over here for ball found. All right, so now when we click these, we they're not going to do anything when we simulate because they're not in control of anything and we can't link these straight to the inputs. We need to use a constant, which is basically like a, a number to say, okay, these, this button will control a number, which will be fed into that input so let's get a constant again like i said in future videos we'll go into this in a lot more detail i'm doing a fair amount of hand waving here don't worry about it too much so i've got two constants here i'm going to connect them there we go so now i want this ball found one connect to control this constant. And I want this power button one to control this power button here. Um, I actually want to just switch these two positions around as well. So I can go, let's finish. I can go into state flow and instead of ball found being one, port one, I make that port two, switch them around. There we go. Now we've got a little zigzag. So we can move this down, move this up. There you go. And so, I don't know why this is here. I forgot about that one. Get rid of that. I can put ball found down here. Power button here. All right, so. Here I've got my simulation stop time. If I click run, it just runs for 10, whatever it is, very quick seconds, 10 seconds. So if I make, if I to put infinity, it'll run for infinity now. So when I click run. So now it's running. So let me turn off the machine and ball's not found. So now these both have a value of zero. If I go into my state machine, the simulation is currently running and it's got a zero. If I come back to Simulink, and I click, I put power button on. Then now I'll go back into state flow. And you can see now the power button's on and it's in searching. And it's not going back to off or anything because it doesn't have a value of zero. If I come back and I switch it off, it gets a value of zero. Inside state flow, it's gone back to off. And then what I can actually do is instead of having to constantly switch backwards and forwards, which as you can see, it gets tedious, I can come down here. Click hide show model browser. And then from here, I can just right click my chart and open a new window. And then now. I have both of them running side by side. I can minimize these. And here you go. So now as I turn it on and off, you can see very clearly that it's switching between the two states on off on off and then now if i'm in searching i click ball found and it goes into tracking so this is how you can very nicely model your state machine and it's not something that if you're just learning state flow and you're just learning about state machines you don't really need to know how to use this and it can be a little bit confusing i find it quite difficult myself however you know it's a good way to model to make sure so for example like now i'm in tracking if i want to make sure that this makes sense 
I can turn off the power button here and it goes straight to off. From here on, you can see that the state flow machine works very nicely. So if I untick ball found again, so the ball's not found, it goes back to searching. Turn off. If I turn on ball found, it shouldn't jump straight to tracking. tracking. And obviously you can see that it doesn't. So even though the ball is found, it's off. Alright guys, so like I said, if you found this a bit too fast paced and confusing, don't worry about it. I like to learn both ways, both from watching somebody do something and also likewise having someone explain exactly what they're doing. So I am going to break it down exactly how, for example, I copy state machines quickly, um, all of that kind of stuff. You know, how these variables and transitions work, how the numbering work, junctions. I'm going to go into a lot of detail, so don't worry about it. But yeah. Just follow along with the playlist. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in a bit. Peace.